Christmassy decorations. I've lit my white company winter candle. I've placed her on my gold sparkly wreath. Oh, I just think it's so exciting and so pretty. so in need of today. Today we are going to properly plan and prep for the festive period and for the Christmas season that is coming up over the next couple of months. I think it is truly the most magical time of year. I think so many of us feel that way. We look forward to it. It's so exciting and I'm so unbelievably excited for Christmas, our first Christmas in this new house. But I think quite a lot of us could probably also agree that when you get to January, you just feel exhausted. It is such a hectic time. It's such a busy, full on time. And for the first time this year, I really want to plan out the next couple of months, what I want them to look like, all the really Christmassy things that I want to do and to kind of plan and prep some of the events that we're doing where like, for example, I know that we're hosting a Christmas party so that I can feel organized and settled as we head into the Christmas period and really get all of like the positive, cozy, festive feelings out of the next couple of months and avoid as far as possible some of that Christmas stress, which I know that we can all be susceptible to. So we're gonna start off with some home updates, which I'm so excited to show you, a few new in bits that I've got and just give you an update on where we're at with everything. And then we're gonna sit down, pen and paper, notebook, and we're gonna properly organize the next couple of months. So if you also want to plan and prep your Christmas period as well, grab a cozy drink, grab a pen and a piece of paper, and we're gonna to plan together. And I am so excited for the satisfaction I'm gonna feel very soon once we've laid all that out. Okay, first of all, sip of tea, and then I'm gonna show you some home updates. So I've actually only got like a few pieces of furniture decor stuff that's like new in, because we're trying to go slowly. To be honest, we're also desperately waiting for the Black Friday sales to get a lot of the things that we want next, rather than get too excited and buy everything when we know that sale season is literally right around the corner. But a few things I just couldn't help myself with getting one is actually the mug that I have been drinking out of. So you know how much I love my white company mug with the little heart in it. And actually a few of you have asked me where I've got it from before. So the mug with the little heart is from the white company. I'll link it. They also have in the exact same shape. I know it looks very similar to this, but the shape is actually slightly different. They also have the exact same shape, a snowflake one. So the middle is a snowflake, which I think is the cutest Christmassy mug. For some reason, I've never like taken the leap and gotten the snowflake one. I don't know quite why. I guess because I don't really have any like proper festive Christmassy mugs. I do need to get them. But in the flat, I didn't really have storage for any extra mugs that couldn't be used all year round. Whereas now I'm in this house, there is actually plenty of storage. So I definitely could get myself some truly Christmassy mugs. Maybe I'll treat myself when I'm out doing festive shopping. But this mug I got because it's brand new in the white company and it's got a little star, which to me is like slightly Christmassy being a little star, but I honestly think it's so cute. It's a slightly different shape to the heart mug. It's like a bigger one and a bit kind of like a more open rim, but yeah, I love it. It's so cute. So if you're looking for a mug that's got like a tiny touch of I mean, a star really isn't Christmas at all, but to me, I saw it and I was like, okay, I'm getting that one. That was like a no brainer for me. But the snowflake and the heart are also so cute. So highly recommend. And then we also got for this coffee table, which you're currently sitting on, some coasters so that we can protect it. And these I just thought were so pretty. My tea has actually been sitting on this one. So you can see that it's got like a rim on it and it needs a clean but they're like ceramic stone and they've just got like this really faint painted floral design and they're all slightly different from each other. So like none of them are the same. They're cork lined at the back and I just think they're really, really pretty and they add like a totally different like texture and feel in here because these are kind of like ceramic tile stone and then obviously we've got a lot of wood. We've got a lot of like comfy cozy now that we've got the rug here. Have I probably shown you the rug? I can't remember if I've shown you the rug. Oh, okay, priorities. Maybe I'm losing my mind and I definitely have. 
but all of a sudden I can't recall showing you the rug. Let me show you right now. Okay, so you've probably seen it in the backdrop of my last couple of vlogs if I haven't properly shown you, but I am obsessed with this rug. I think it is so nice. We've got the jute fabric at the end here that creates like a really nice border, I think, around it. And then it's like this wool woven rug. And it's got all these different colors in it, which I think are really nice because it helps make it look slightly less messy and just adds a bit of extra something to it. And I think it's so nice. I've also popped this stool there for now to be a bit of like an end table so I can put my glass of wine or my coffee there when I'm sat on the sofa. But honestly, this rug, I just think, I don't know what you think, but I just think it goes with the coffee table and the sofa so well. It honestly feels like custom made. I'm so obsessed with it. I think it frames the space so nicely. It gives it a proper warm, cozy feel where there was just so much wood in here before. And yeah, I'm absolutely obsessed with the rug. And if I've already shown you that rug, then I'm sorry for repeating myself, but I could gush about it. I think it's probably one of the best things we've bought for the house so far. It could even be my favorite. Maybe the sofa's my favorite, but the rug is honestly incredible. It's so soft and comfy. It hoovers really well. It's from Loaf. It's one of their new ones. I think it's called the Stitcher rug. If I've got that name wrong, I'll put a link to the rug in the description because obsessed. And if you're in the market for a rug, I also thought it was really reasonably priced for like a really good quality, massive rug as well. Okay, next, let me show you. We can actually unbox it together. I'm so terrible at letting my tea go cold. I'm all excited about making a tea and then I just let it cool before I even get to it. Right, I need a pair of scissors. Okay, so in here we have bedside, a bedside table lamp. I've actually already unboxed one of them. I didn't get around to unboxing the other, so we can open it together. And I really like it. Let me know what you think. I, when I first opened the other one, I like really, really loved it. And then I slowly been thinking to myself, maybe I should have got something a bit more exciting and with a bit more color to it. And I don't know if you know Pookie lights, but like Pookie do such gorgeous lights and we were really tempted to get some from there they are quite pricey and we changed our minds at the last minute and got one that was a little bit more affordable but now i'm like maybe i should have just gone for it with the pookie lights because they're so stunning but i think maybe what i'll do is i'll get a pookie light with like a gorgeous shade to go in here somewhere or for example i don't know if you can actually see up there but at the moment, we don't have any lampshades on any of the bulbs in any of the rooms. So we are going to need to get new lampshades. Maybe we could get pookie lampshades for them. I don't know. I don't know. Anyway, let me show you this because I do think it's really gorgeous. Okay, let me just unwrap this. Okay, so first up, this is the lampshade. It's like a natural linen. It's not white, it's kind of like a oatmeal-y, creamy color. And I think the, um, I don't know how well the camera's gonna pick that up. But I think like the texture of the fabric is really nice. Everyone loves linen and I think it's a really pretty color. And then the base. Yeah, like a really warm gray color. So I think it's really pretty and I love the style of it. Like it does feel kind of country homey, which I really love. So this is the bedside lamp. But anyway, let's get it upstairs and we can put it in place and you can see kind of like the full effect once it's actually on the bedside tables next to the beds. Oh, I just still absolutely love it every time I walk in here. It just feels so nice. And the chest of drawers, I just <laughs> still can't get over them. I really, really need to, let me just pop this down. I really need to get a box with a lid for all of those cables because that is horrendous and i don't really love having this techie stuff here either to be honest i just think all technology i just kind of want it put away i just think this chest of drawers is still so so gorgeous and i'm loving the setup of now having like my little mirror here and i've got my girly bits and yeah it's perfect i also thought i could get like a cute pookie light here because this whilst this mushroom lamp is cute it was literally four pounds from ikea and it is like completely plastic and not we could upgrade, we could upgrade her basically. This is the one that we've already put up. This is the other thing, like, you know, we both we both really like having our own 
sunset lamps that like wake us up in the morning if we're trying to get up really early in the dark as like part of Cameron's also really like super strict on like his morning routine and like when he wakes up and stuff like that so that's not so much of a vibe but this is what the lamp looks like in place and I also think he uses light really in like a really gorgeous way so I do think it's lovely like I'm really happy with it I just think I don't know do you guys think that this room is just like lacking a lot of color I also think that like for example they've got hooks up there this room could do with so much art as I said there's no lampshades on literally any of the bulbs and there's like more hooks as well they had here so maybe once I get some like art in here it might feel a little bit more colorful I'm not mad about colour, but I just feel that maybe this is a little bit too washed out. But I think the lamp is cute and I'm not going to bother returning them. So I'm going to get this one all set up now and then we can head downstairs and start planning. But first of all, just a quick look at our river again, because it's just always gorgeous. And I just can't believe that this is the view from my bedroom in the morning. Oh, hi. The birds truly are incredible around here. You can literally always hear them. Here she is all set up and it's actually kind of cute that like the color of this matches really well. The bottom color of my Lumi light as well. And then I've got my little E where I put my earrings at the end of the day. Yeah, I think that looks cute. And we've got both in there. We love a bit of symmetry. Happy with that. Oh good, I'm pleased. Right. Let's get these switched off so we're not wasting electricity in the day. The only other home update I wanted to show you was our front garden, but it honestly feels pointless now. <laughs> we did like a full, like massive sweep of like the front path and all of these have all been like massively chopped back. And anyway, it doesn't matter. The weather's ruined it. It's everything looks like all overgrown and we like jet washed all up the path and everything. And it all looked fabulous, which has changed now. But you can believe that come the spring, I am gonna become a crazy gardening lady. Like I'm so excited. I need to find a location where I can plant all the right bulbs. I need to do a bit of reading actually at some point. Hopefully once we do some planning, I can plan when I'm gonna have some slow Christmassy days, which are just a bit calmer. And then I can read some gardening books and work out if there's any bulbs I need to plant over the winter period. Like now, I think I probably missed the last chance to like plant things before you hit the frost season but yeah I need to work out if there's anything I need to plant now or if there's anything I need to plant in the new year so that next spring and next summer I would really love to have a little bit of a loot of certain veg and certain definitely fresh herbs but even apart from that like there's a lot of florals I'd love to be able to add to the garden here it's very green which I love we're so lucky to have such an established garden but yeah, I want to do a bit of reading and work out what I can plant to make it a little bit more colourful and hopefully also grow us some food, which would be very exciting. Okay, let's do this. Let's plan. I've just made myself a new cup of tea. I'm really loving at the moment the Pucker 3 Ginger one. And I feel like ginger tea at this time of year also just fits very perfectly with making me feel festive. But I am so ready now to get planning. So there's a couple of ways that I wanna structure this. I want to set some intentions. For me, intentions are always such a good way to just have some nice guideposts and a bit of a direction in the way that you want to feel, behave and act during a particular period. So I wanna set some intentions for the festive season. And then I want to go through all the things I've currently got planned and some of the things that I want to plan and we can do some structured planning so that we can tackle each of those things in the best way possible. Okay, so first of all, setting some intentions. I really want this particular Christmas just to feel like super blissful. I am always all about romanticizing the little things, but this one just feels like extra special being in a new home and in a new space. I'm so looking forward to it and I want it to live up to those expectations. So I really want to set the intention for this festive period to really keep like gratitude and positivity like super front of mind. I think whenever like stress starts to build or I start to feel overwhelmed, kind of dragging that gratitude back to the forefront of my mind and thinking like how lucky I am for literally everything, to be honest. I'm, I 
feel so lucky all the time. And yeah, I just think gratitude whenever I've had like more stressful periods of life, gratitude has always been like the most powerful thing to pull me out of it. So keeping gratitude really front of mind as I enjoy all of the family and friends time over the next couple of months is such an important intention for me. And also just to really stay focused on being super present. So I know that it's a super chaotic time. And like, for example, I really want to do Vlogmas this year. Not every single day do I think I'm gonna be able to post, but like a few times a week is my goal throughout December to be able to share videos several times a week. And whilst that's gonna be quite a big challenge for me doing all that around my job, I want to make sure that when I am actually like having those experiences that I'm vlogging and sharing with you, I stay super present in those and really enjoy the process whilst also tackling a new challenge. So staying super present and making sure that I'm super full of gratitude throughout the next two months are my intentions that I want to set. So now it is about looking forward at all the things we've got planned and some of the activities that I want to do. So, so in a similar way to what we did with autumn, I have started to make a little bit of a list of all the things that I really want to do and prioritize in the winter festive period. The first couple of ones are like inevitable things that are absolutely happening, which is decorating our new home for Christmas for the first time and decorating our first tree in our first home together and for Cameron and I to do that together and really enjoy it, which is why I am putting up a couple of little things here and there. But in general, I really wanna be able to do that with him in like a proper Christmassy day, put on our favorite Christmassy songs and just, I don't know, have something cinnamon covered baking in the oven whilst we do it and just really romanticize that whole experience of decorating rather than it being like a job that needs to get done i want to really soak up that whole experience of doing it so the thing if that is number one on the list is when are we going to do that i think next friday night would be a good one so i've got my trusty laptop here i use just like the apple calendar to plan everything so I think next Friday night, we are gonna do decorate for Christmas. Okay, so decorating for Christmas, that is the first thing. The next thing is to actually properly host a Christmas party, which I am also really excited that we are doing that. So we've got a Christmas party planned for the first week of December with all of our friends. And that is just so exciting. It's also really fun because we actually haven't had a lot of opportunities like in our relationship where we've brought lots of our friends together, like all in one big party. So I'm so excited for that. And one of the things that even though I know the date for that, the first week of December, I want to plan in when I'm going to properly map out all of the meals, because again, I want to make sure that for that party, I am not like running around like a complete stress ball right before it starts. And I'm really able to, my dream version of being settled and calm is that before everybody arrives, Cameron and I can have a drink, like a glass of Prosecco or a glass of champagne or something before everybody arrives and we're just like chilling in like the space that's fully ready, all the food is prepped and we're just enjoying ourselves. To me, that's like the epitome of doing it right and not like pulling my curlers out my hair while people are like knocking on the door, which is definitely something that I can relate to in previous years. People have arrived and like, I've literally been not dressed because I've been doing food prep so last minute. So I don't want any of that. So, I'm thinking if the weekend before I map, oh, maybe it needs to be two weekends before. If two weekends before, so literally next weekend, I plan out all of the meals that I want to do and when I'm gonna get the food, I think probably what I'll do is like an online order of food that just like arrives to the house. And then I can really plan it. I think sometimes that's one of those things where like online grocery shopping is really helpful because you can map out all the things that you want. So I think we'll definitely do that. And then I need to plan all of the decor, hopefully because I'll have decorated next weekend, most of the decorations will be done. The tree, I obviously need to plan out when we're getting the tree. I think we might be able to do that next weekend. And actually, thank you so much for letting me know that they actually chop the trees like all at the same time. So if you wait a couple of weeks, it doesn't really make much difference. That obviously makes so much sense if you think about it because there's so many trees sitting there. 
like it never really occurred to me that they would like chopped down each week. So anyway, we're gonna get the tree maybe next weekend. That might be a bit of a push, might have to be the week after. Other things on my list, I really wanna go to the theater. To me, like the festive season is such a lovely time for going to the theater. I already know, and you know that the last winter, I literally went so many times. I just used like all of my disposable income on going to the theater. And I loved it, I had zero regrets. So I'd love to be able to do the same thing or something similar this year. I've already got one thing booked in. So I know that I'm going to see Tina Turner, the musical, which, oh my gosh, it was like, I've seen it before and it was so good. It was so good that as soon as I finished seeing it with my friends, I immediately booked tickets for my sister's birthday. And we finally booked in the date that we're going. So I'm taking my sister for her birthday in a few weeks to go and see Tina, which I'm so excited for. I really recommend it if you also like the theatre and like a musical. It's just, it was brilliant. I also really want to see Frozen in the theatre. I think it would just be such a magical Christmassy thing to do. I'm sure there are quite a lot of children there, but I like children, so I don't mind. And again, like me and my sister, we love Disney, we love a musical, and I think Frozen would just be such like a magical Christmassy one. So I'd love to see if we could find a date to do that. That might have to be like a between Christmas and New Year kind of time to go, because I'm not sure if we're gonna find a slot before Christmas. Another obligatory activity for me is Christmas at Kew. So Kew Gardens do a Christmas, like a Christmas light show every year and it is absolutely spectacular. It's so, so gorgeous. And I'm so, so, so excited to go again this year. So we've got tickets for that 14th of December, all quite late. Okay, Christmas at Q. I absolutely love going to see Christmas at Q. It's just such a gorgeous, gorgeous experience. If you do live in the area and you haven't been and it's been in your bucket list, it's worth it. Although I will say you need to get your tickets early. So. If you're seeing this and you think you want to go to Christmas at Q, book it like right now. Like just literally pause this video, turn this video off, I don't even care. Just go book your tickets because they will be running out. Alternatively, if you don't live in the area, then I think a Christmas like outdoor light show is just something so gorgeous. And I feel like almost every town, almost every city has some kind of Christmas lights that it's just so gorgeous to be able to go and walk through the Christmas lights, especially if they're in nature somewhere. I just think it's such a lovely thing to be able to do. Sorry if you can hear banging in the background. My neighbors are installing a new kitchen and I've tried to pause filming this a few times so that we can like wait till they're done, but I don't think they're ever gonna be done. So I'm sorry if you can hear that in the background. Okay, next thing is ice skating at Hampton Court Palace. I really, really want to do this. I haven't booked my tickets yet, but really, really want to. I've also always wanted to do it at Somerset House which I've never done before either in London because that setup just looks absolutely stunning. So I'm thinking either Hampton Court Palace or Somerset House. I also love ice skating at Windsor Castle as well. That is a stunning place to do it. But basically I wanna go ice skating. I wanna go ice skating like somewhere beautiful. And I'm thinking Hampton Court is my preferred choice for this year but I need to get that book. So actually that's a really good reminder to literally book that like as soon as I finished filming. Next one is Winter Wonderland. Now I know people have mixed thoughts on Winter Wonderland. It can absolutely feel like a bit of a zoo. It's rammed with people, your feet hurt. It's often raining, it's cold and you're like in central London, the tubes are packed. I honestly get all those negatives, but there's just something about it. There's something about being surrounded by lots of other people that also just like love Christmas and like everyone's at Winter Wonderland to have a good time. Like I think Christmas is one of those things where like people are only out and about because they wanna have fun and it's just, it's such a joyous time. So I really do wanna do Winter Wonderland. I'm not amazing at roller coasters, but this year I kinda of wanna do some more roller coasters, just eat all of the food. Like I want a hot dog, I want mac and cheese, I want pizza slices, I want donuts, I want churros. I literally just want the whole thing. I literally go nuts for the food. I love it when you go into like the beer keller and you've got like the big steins of beer. I just, whole thing, love it. So need to find a date to do that as well. I think that's also gonna be like an early December time kind of a thing. The next one is going to see a sports game. Me and my family go to Twickenham to watch the big game every single year, which is always on the 27th. And it's basically just like a rugby game that we go and see every single year. 
and it's just always fun. Again, it's one of those things where everybody's freezing cold the whole time. The only drinks are like cold Guinness and cold beer. And so your hands get even colder. You've got like hats and scarves and you sit up in the rafters and watch this rugby game and everyone's freezing, but it's just, there's something about it that's so nostalgic. And then we all go back to my parents' house every year afterwards with our family friends and usually cook like a big pot of chili or massive trays of lasagna that like my mum's pre-made. And it's such a lovely tradition that we all do. And we're gonna do it again this year, of course, which I am really looking forward to. And then the other just like smaller things that I'd love to be able to tick off is obviously drinking as much mulled wine as I possibly can without getting too much of a headache over the festive period. I need to bake an apple crumble. That was actually on my list of one of the things that I wanted to do for autumn and I didn't end up doing it. So I really want to do that the winter period. Baking apple crumble is still on the list. Just like lots of cozy winter walks, drinking far too much chai lattes and taking them out with me on like crunchy leaved winter walks is always so special. And then the final thing that I would love to do and to happen this year is to get some snow. Last year we had crazy snow in the UK for a week. Like it wasn't even a week, it was a few days of like bucketing snow and it was super thick. And I actually missed it because I was away in Barbados, which don't get me wrong. I know that I was like <laughs> so lucky and privileged to be in Barbados. We were there for my dad's 60th. And we literally left before it started snowing. When we came back, it all melted into like slush. So I didn't see any snow last year. Uh, and I would love to see some this year. And yeah, in the UK, it's never a guarantee and you never know when it's gonna come or for how long, but I'd love to have a little bit of snow, especially pre-Christmas. That would just feel so exciting. So we will see about some snow as well. But yeah, I think I'm really happy with that list. I think those are all of the things that I really want to do with this festive period. And it's been really helpful to start popping some of those things into my calendar about when they're gonna happen. I'm gonna continue to play around a bit with my calendar for the rest of the day and sort out when I want to do any additional planning around, for example, the Christmas party so that I feel a little bit organized and make sure that I'm timing my online orders of like Christmas decorations that I need before Cameron and I actually have it scheduled in to do the decorating. So I need to get all that stuff ordered before next week if I'm gonna do it next Friday. Please, please, please let me know in the comments what things you are looking forward to doing this festive period, what things you recommend I should try. Does your family have any traditions that you love doing every single year that you're also looking forward to doing again? this year and hopefully this video was a little bit of a reminder to romanticize this period it's truly so magical and gave you a couple of ideas of things that you can put on your list for the christmas season if you haven't started your list yet but other than that thank you so much for watching i hope you have the loveliest week and i truly can't wait to see you in